Whether you're in Texas or any other area of the country, the value of bringing your grass back and improving your forage is very clear. In recent years, there has been a revolution in the use of utility vehicles, or ATVs, as spray rigs to get better control of weeds and brush in pastures. Charlie Hart from Dow AgriSciences takes us in the field to share some best management practices when it comes to ATV sprayers. There's lots of different sprayers that you can buy today, lots of them that are already pre uh, put together for you, different sizes, different types of boom configurations, different types of tanks and things like that. There's no one size that fits all, but there's a few things on this. This is one I had custom built and there's a few things on this that I've learned through the years help me from the standpoint of uh, pasture spraying, whether that's brush spraying or weed spraying or whatever. One of the things is, is that we have a 65 gallon nurse tank and I don't ever spray out of this tank. It's, it's strictly for water. Uh, it's never contaminated with any, any chemical at all. And then I can fill up uh, four different five gallon, what we call cone tanks. These cone tanks are really nice because if you've ever been out spraying, in, in, a, in a flat bottom or a round bottom type type tank like the, like the nurse tank back here, when you're going out there back and forth in the pasture, it's really hard to positive drain those. These you get positive drain of, no, really no matter what kind of terrain you're in. So you can take these all the way down until you're spraying air. And that's a very good uh, thing when it comes to tanks in terms of, of weed spraying and, and brush spraying. Lots of different types of pumps that you can get as well. What I chose to go with are, are electric pumps. I have a separate electric pump for the nurse tank and another pump for the, for the sprayer itself. Okay, these are 12 volt pumps. One of the things that you need to be sure of is to match the pump volume with, with the nozzling configuration that you decide to use, okay? All the nozzles will have charts with them and tell you the, the flow requirement for the nozzles. Make sure that your pump gets you the right kind of flow that you need for the, for the type of nozzle that you're gonna get. Uh, what you see here is, is a boomless nozzle, uh, and we'll talk about that in just a second, but you can also get boom type nozzles where, where you fold the booms out. The problem with those out on pasture and rangeland is, is when you're going in, in and out of, of uh, rough areas, you can, those things will jump around on you and they're, they get caught in the brush and other things like that. So where I've got actually got a boomless sprayer on either side of this, uh, or boomless nozzles, and then flat fan nozzles in the center, okay? And so with this, I can actually, um, I'm not any wider than my vehicle, which means that if I can get my vehicle through it from a brush standpoint, I'm not gonna be dragging the boom on anything. But yet I can spray about a 30 foot swath with this application technique right here. Another thing that's important on these larger rigs is to be able to have control of the sprayer from the cab of the, of the vehicle. We can, uh, we can have just an on off switch like we have over here, simply turns the pump on and off. Uh, and then we can have controllers here that actually shows you the, your boom pressure and you're able to turn on and off different parts of the boom. Nozzles also have to have a specific height above their target. And again, as you look at the nozzle and you look at those manufacturer specification, it'll tell you how high above your target that, that you need to be. So one of the things that really is helpful is to have a boom that is adjustable so that if I'm going out and spraying weeds that are short, um, not very tall, I can actually drop this boom down, level it out and, and spray lower to the ground. Or like we're gonna try to do today, I can bring this up higher and get it above prickly pear plants and spray prickly pear as well. Another good aspect of a sprayer is to have a good handheld wand on it as well. There's lots of different types of nozzles and lots of different types of hand wands that you can use and you can get. But in general, um, just having a good size hose on it, actually you can get one that, that has a reel on it if you want to invest in that and, and go up to about 25, 30 feet long of hose as well. Uh, but this allows you to do spot spraying as we think about controlling weeds and brush in our pasture and do-it-yourself type of applications, and, and it's, it's a way that we can get out and actually control mesquite, prickly pear, weeds, or whatever in our pastures and help us grow more grass, help us grow more forage for our cattle, 
uh, as well as, as improve the condition of our rangeland for wildlife. Thanks so much, Charlie. That's great advice that many of us can use.